Hi guys, we're getting ready to close up shop for today, but I am sitting here plying a um, skein of Angora yarn that I've spun. We've been spinning a lot because we went to like spinning mode, hardcore, um, to make sure we had enough yarn for everybody because, you know, I got Angora in my mouth. That would be sad. So... <laughs> We ran out of yarn. It's like a nightmare thing. So anyway, I'm plying. I'm doing a two-ply yarn, and I am plying from the center pole ball. So I have the center of the ball, and I have this other strand that's the outside, and I have it sitting down here in between the treadles on my spinning wheel. Hi, Carly. Happy weekend to you, too. I know. It's almost there. Um, except now I've started this project, and I've got to finish it because that's just wrong otherwise. So when I ply, the most important things to do is keep your tension accurate and correct and also keep your speed going consistently. So I have, um, I'm not just letting this fly in through my hands. I'm actually, um, keeping a little bit of tension back on the yard and I make yarn and I make sure to not, um, speed up my feet because it's really easy to get impatient and speed your feet up as you're plying and that keeps you that keeps your yarn consistent when you have a consistent ply you're gonna be able to have a loop like this now sometimes depending on how tight you want your twist you're actually gonna have a loop that still Z's back up a little bit on itself um it has a little bit of energy left and that's okay it's actually better to have a yarn that has a little bit of too much energy than it is to have yarn that has no energy because when you uh, knit or crochet with it, a yarn that is loosely plied is going to split and cause you all sorts of trouble. Um, a lot of people think art yarn needs no ply. Yes, it does. Unless you are doing a single, which yes, you can do a beautifully single balanced single yarn. But if you want it to be truly balanced and really good art yarn, there's a lot of counting that's involved. And there's also a lot of, um, balance with your ply so danielle did this is not art yarn where's our art yarn our art yarn is far away far away I'll so grab it. we've been doing a fun thing i've been spinning and she's been plying all weekend week week year yeah. it's our new thing um so this is a non-art yarn that we plied so this is what we call an even ply i don't know whether you guys can see it the gold is the ply the the other is the angora that is an even ply. So now we have this art yarn has a slight, oh, there we go, has a slightly uneven ply because we're using a thread with an art yarn and that makes it a boucle. But you can see how tight that ply is on there. It is not a loosey goosey ply. And then we have like, isn't that one pretty? I love, I know the gold one. It's for a very special project. Um, and then this is mohair. And again, we use this ply as a um, as an auto wrap or a boucle. So it basically wraps around and makes it tight. And you can barely see it. But if that yarn, if this yarn didn't have that tight ply, um, it would fall apart. Uh, it would not be suitable for garments. So when you guys look at art yarn and you're doing art yarn, make sure to really study the structure of your ply. Plying is just as important as um, as spinning, even more important. You can see it here on the end where it's loose. Yeah. It, it's not loopy. It's not loopy and lanky. It's, I mean, there's bumps, but it's not, the plies are not, coming apart right still have angora in my nose another fun thing totally random not random okay danielle's derailing us derailing here i'll turn it so you can see guys hi 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 we're like have you like all on an angle it's i great. know it's great okay so we sell our rovings in two ounces two ounces so this lovely ball of yarn, 430 yards. We get asked all the time, how many yards can you get out of that two ounces? Well, I can get a lot out of it. 430 yards out of 1.73 ounces of Angora. Yep. 
Angora goes a long way. So, when you get the little 20 gram bags from us, you only need two of them. To do that. To make a shawl. Um, I love playing with thread because we get sparkle. Yeah. And, and I save a lot of yardage on my item. It also, and it still is really, really light. It also adds more structure. And strength, and strength because to it. it's stronger than the actual fiber is. Because, because all fiber rips. Every yes. fiber rips. Yes, and your ultra fine fibers rip the most. Rip the most because, you know, smaller diameter, less strength. Right. And you guys all should know our fleece, our, um, our fleece test, which is the ping test, which ping we test. do all the time. But no matter what, your fiber will rip. Now, what I'm spinning now, which is two ply straight Angora. This is a nice sturdy yarn, but I did not. I also, this was a show coat. Um, and this is not spun as finely. It, if I had auto wrapped or if I had done this, applied this with a thread, it would have been beautiful. It would have been actually probably prettier than it is now, but I needed some straight Angora too. I think um, it's stunning. By it's, but it's really pretty because it's black and it's, it's pretty, really and pretty. It's pretty. And it's spun with just a little bit of texture. And when you spin for a textured yarn, for a rustic yarn, the biggest key is to count. So as you treadle, you're going to count and go one, two, three, let a slub fit through. Um, and if you do that, you're going to end up with a much more balanced yarn. And as I'm plying this back on itself, most of the places I have slubs, there's actually a slub on both sides of the fiber. <laughs> Awesome. Which is showing that it's really balanced. At least they're within an inch of each other, if mm -hmm. not right on each other. Right. So, yeah. Um, art yarn. Art yarn is still mechanically sound. Right. If there's a, it's a scientific yarn. Um, it may be lumpy. It might mm -hmm. be bumpy. It might, you know, have all kinds of different quirky things to it. But it is still mechanically sound. It, it it has a good twist to it. It's balanced plied. It you know even if it still has more energy, a balanced ply does not necessarily mean that it lang hangs there like a limp noodle. Um, it's like the it means the ply is balanced with the single spin. See like right there. Oops. Sorry, Wait, phone. Oops. Stop it. There we go. Okay. That's if you exactly pull, balanced. If you pull, if you go to some place and you get yarn and they say, oh, this is a balanced ply and it looks like that, mm -hmm. that's not a balanced ply. It's not a balanced ply. Up here is a balanced ply. And now if I let this go out, see how it hangs? It hangs completely perfect. And look at that. I was like, I was saying the slubs on this one because it is a balanced yarn exactly lined up. Yep. In the, from each, each fiber. And that's all really important. And why is that important? Because you are spinning for a finished item. You are not going to have perfect yarn all the time. And that's okay. There's no such thing as perfect yarn all the time. Sometimes there's just flat out, oh man, I failed this yarn. Right. And it's all going to work. It's all going to end up or crochet up. But if you are selling yarn, if you are promoting yarn for um, different things, things like that, you really do need to have a balanced yarn and you need to work on your spinning skills. And even if you're not selling yarn, over time, work on your spinning skills so that you can get this done. It's not an overnight process. It took me years, years before I didn't have to hang my yarn. To um, wait it. To you... wait it when I, when I finished it. Um, the vast majority of time, I had to wait it. Um, it's probably been after 20 years of spinning... Um, it probably took me, I don't know, 10 years. If and getting the, to, right, the correct spinning wheel. If you have to weight your yarn to make it hang balanced and not all curly cue, what you make out of it will be all bunched up. It will, it will, it will it have will a skew. It will go back to mm -hmm. what now, it was. When we're saying weight your yarn, we're talking about, hang on, let me get some, a whole bunch of twists in here. Okay. We're talking about yarn that does this, which is too much energy. If it has a slight twist, like that, that's actually going to straighten out. You don't want any more than that. That is perfect yarn. That's your correct yarn. 
And you can rest your yarn on your bobbin to kind of help you along with that too. Mm -hmm. um, but it basically is in the plying. And a lot of that is also, like I say, your feet tend to speed up. Um, certain wheels are harder to get control on. Um, different things like that. I do not have control issues on the Kromskis or the Modricrofts. I tend to overcompensate on, um, on Ashford's for them being so slow. It's, they're slow, so then I tend to go too fast. Mm -hmm. Um, and my old Jensen production wheel, my gosh, that wheel is fast and it's great, but it overspins yarn like, oh yeah, insanity. Um, most of the most of the production Canadian production wheels that that type are where. So then you either get a plying wheel or you move your whorl to the next largest size. And if you spin on one size and then move your whorl to the next largest size, if you can, if you have another size, then it will balance it out. It's kind of a cool, neat trick um, because your feet will kind of adapt to that. Um, so, you know, and it's, it just takes a lot of practice. I think people tend to kind of dismiss it. I hate plying. I make no secret of the fact I hate plying. But it has to be done correctly. And you can get twist measurement tools. Um, I used to use those. I don't do that anymore. Um, but those can help too. And knowing what you're, you know, spinning for. And challenge yourself. Every yarn, every fiber wants to be certain things. But challenge yourself so that, you know, you can control what that fiber wants to be. Not just have that fiber control what you want it to be. Or what it wants to be because you eventually you know you do get to the stage where you want it to do certain things and you know gosh darn it if I want you know bulky cashmere by golly I can spin it and I'm gonna call you crazy I don't want bulky cashmere I don't like cashmere we get to spin cashmere we do goat class is Starting Tuesday, <clears throat> yep. <clears throat> we have stories to tell those people. We learned a lot about cashmere and the lack of it. <laughs> why, why people have it from other countries? <laughs> yeah. Here, I'm gonna share one little story with you about okay, cashmere. Okay, here's story time. Story time. Growing up, I grew up on a farm, and and of course, you know, farms have barns. And the neighbor across the highway from us raised Angora goats. And anytime you raise some sort of livestock that is bizarre and out of the ordinary, you know, not a cow, not a dairy goat, you know, if you raise sheep or if you raise fiber goats or rabbits, at some point somebody goes, hey, I need to get rid of these. Something happened. We lo we're losing our farm. We're moving. We can't sell them. We haven't, you know, I found these neglected, so on and so forth. You end up having to take in a rescue at some point. Well, our neighbor across the highway at some point took in a rescue. Okay. They took in a rescue flock, a herd of Angora goats and a cashmere goat. That cashmere goat promptly scaled slash jumped they're completely goat-proof fences. Ran all over the neighborhood. Was last seen atop the roof of our barn before it disappeared into the wilds forever. <laughs> you know those pictures of goats that you see standing in trees? Those are cashmere. Those are cashmere. <laughs> so, if you ever wonder why cashmere is so expensive. That's rule number one. <laughs> That's rule number one. <laughs> Because <laughs> they, they escape goat-proof fencing and scale barns. There's also, you know, uh, the, okay, you hear a lot about primitive breeds when you're getting animals. Oh, oh, Shetland sheep are, are great because they raise their babies and they're so easy and they, they live off the land and nothing kills them. Great Icelandic. mothers. Great so mothering. Sheep. Great mothering instincts. Great mothering. No need to pull lambs. No birthing problems. That's all true. That's all true. But you realize when they have that, that's because they're feral. <laughs> and I'm not talking about Shetlands in particular here. It can go for a lot of breeds, like cashmere goats, um, soy sheep. 
uh, all these breeds yeah. that people say they are great mothers. Great mothers. Don't have to interfere in you. Don't have to feed them in the winter. No, time. they drop those that babies. <laughs> they drop those babies in a snowbank. Those babies bounce right up out and of that snowbank. Nurse, and you'll never catch them <laughs> <Right>. again. <laughs> that's that's yeah. that's that's code words for feral 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 yeah. and that's okay we like those if i was going to have any sheep right now i'd have shetlands i like the little feral things but you know just be prepared when you hear those words because they'll tell them to you like they're a positive <laughs> <laughs> and the the cashmere is one of those things i think yeah yeah that's a positive yeah, it's a positive it's a positive, positive that positive they that i'm pretty sure that, that goat reproduced somehow and those babies never had to be pulled <laughs> <laughs> you know there's rumors that there was i don't know um mountain, mountain goats, goats mountain with goats the best there, cashmere ever around, ever in the right desert around over there. Bend, uh -huh. oregon you guys <laughs> there was a mountain goat scene not too far away from our house you know maybe 15 miles um, have you seen the video of the cat of the goats and wherever it was in germany switzerland on the roof the giant horned ones on the roof of the soft house <laughs> all i'm envisioning <laughs> is the white goat on the roof of my barn <laughs> You say that. They're really cool. They're a, they're a version of ibex, and they're really cool looking. They've got these huge horns. I bet you they're great mothers and <laughs> they, great foragers, yep. and they they take no additional feed other than just basic grass hay. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're wild. <laughs> oh, oh, it's been a week. Okay, it's been a week. We we unloaded. Okay, so we went to a fiber <laughs> festival last weekend. Yep. Yep, we did that. We unloaded and... Wait, wait, wait. That makes it sound too easy. Okay. Mm. We went to a fiber festival where we got there the morning of the fiber festival. Um, Because we drove over because the night before. Because we drove over the night because before. Because it was because a five-hour drive. Five-hour drive. After we loaded the yarn shop the day before. And then no, we, the same day. We same drove. Day. Right. And then we... Okay, so then we backed the truck up. And we got there at 6.30 in the morning. After the dog barked all night long, that's a different story. That's a different story. <laughs> By the way, Arya sleeps on the bed. Not Only. In crate, not in a crate. Never in a crate. <laughs> She's really well trained other than that, but yeah. Okay, we could probably place her now and have her sleep with the door open. Nowhere near a crate. <laughs> right. Okay, so... So we drive over there. We get there at 6.30 in the morning. We didn't even stop for coffee. Waited. Waited. They and were, waited. They were, and waited, and waited, and waited. waited. Backed up to the door, to the unload oh, yeah. door. Because we have a yarn shop to unload and put a booth together. Yes, like the whole thing. So, they opened up the doors finally at like 7.40 after an hour. <laughs> and our booth was on the very opposite side of the building. Opposite side. As far away as you could get from the yep. door. It was great. So we ran stuff. <laughs> ran. Because we only had an hour and 20 minutes to set up the booth. Which we did. We did that. In an hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> right. It was really close. So bad. So it was great. And then we ran back and forth and carried stuff. Then we loaded. And when we were going to load, I'm like, you are driving around the building. Somehow you're getting to this other door. I don't care whether you have to take out poles. With the truck, we don't like between those poles with the truck. I was like, trailer. I don't really like. We don't like this truck anyway. It doesn't matter. You just go right over the poles, okay? There was paths. There was roads. There's there, roads. I saw people driving back there. This was not totally irresponsible. Not totally. Only semi. So, so she found that we loaded up, then <laughs> went back to my mom's house. We we had free room and board that weekend, right? Um, had to, but we had to do the family dinner as, right. she, as you all know, that's what happens when you stay with family. There must be the family, family dinner. dinner. And then, then we jumped in the truck again and with the trailer because we never unhook the trailer <laughs> because, they, because get they get stolen. It's one of our rules. Okay. So, and, and we drove another 40 minutes <laughs> yep. one way to go to our shearer's house to load up fleece to, and we graded fleece. In the pretty, dark. Pretty much in the dark. And we saw baby lambs. We did. Because and that's we what posted took up the daylight. Right, right. We Was posted the really bad pictures. selfies in the dark after we were after done. After the dark, sh after shearing. Not shearing, sh sorting, <laughs> sorting, sorting. Sorting. Sorting fleeces shearing. and putting them in the trailer. There were 33 of them. Yes. You guys can do the math. 33 by an average of 10 pounds. We're not doing that math. 
probably more than that. There's a lot of big fleece in there. We're not. Anyway. But there's really cool fleeces. We got Montedale. We got Coopworth. We got Coopworth. Blue. Blue. We got blue, blue BFL. Blue BFL. We got tons of BFL. We got... More BFL. Yeah, and we got we got Wallace's fleece again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he Wally. saved it for us. And and we got like I don't know what else, all the things. There's yeah, some Romney, cool. there's there's cool stuff. Cool fleece. Man, we got you guys good crack, okay? <laughs> yep. We got, got you the best stuff this time. So then then we stayed the night again because at that point I we was like really I'm tired. I'm not driving back because that's stupid. Five hours. We had children to pick up too. That's yeah. a whole other story. It's so spring break with the with so grandma. We um so we went back, stated that we decided to not put the puppy in the crate. So the puppy, like you know, slept all night long. They with us sh did really good. So we got back here on yep. Sunday. Yep, unloaded on Tuesday. Uh, well, we had a hair appointment on Sunday <laughs> That's also. True. That's right. We had the hair appointment. Yep. Then we unloaded. We pretended it didn't exist on Monday. Right. Then then we unloaded on Tuesday. Then I went, oh my gosh, we have no yarn We didn't left. just unload on Tuesday. We unloaded, organized, and reloaded on yes, Tuesday. Most of it. Most uh -huh. of it. All the roving went back in. Uh-huh. Yeah. We, yeah. Wallace is roving is here again. It's just as dirty as it was last time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wally likes the hay. He does. Um, so then, then we reloaded and then we decided, I went, oh my gosh, we have no hand spun yarn. Now I know, I mean, there's only like, I don't know, a hundred skeins here, but there's not enough to, there's not enough. There was not enough art yarn. There's not enough yarn. Well, we sold quite a we bit. We sold of, a lot. In, in Redmond, which, thank you guys. Yes, that's awesome. For the support. Right. Um, but now we need more. We because need more. that's just awful to not have it all. So, so we went, and, and so then we decided to do the spinning thon, which dropped to like 14 skeins. Something like that. Yeah. And so we did, so then that's been the week. Then on Tuesday of this week. We get to reload the trailer, finish reloading the trailer. Finish reloading the trailer with the whole yarn shop. Right. And then we drive to Puyallup on Wednesday. Yep. And we'll so hopefully be able to unload the heavy stuff. That, the whole, no, the, the goal whole, is the goal, goal is the whole, whole, whole thing. thing. Because at this fiber festival, it's not a fairgrounds and it's really hard to drive back and forth and all a that stuff. A state fairgrounds. State fairgrounds. So Which can, isn't just a normal fairgrounds. It's like a fairgrounds on... Steroids. Oh, huge. It's a huge fairgrounds. Okay, so then okay. we have to do. So, uh, look, I have my phone here so we can, oh, we can see the comments and not leave the right yarn. Part. Yep, all the yarn. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, so then we're going to go and we're going to be up there. So if you guys are in the Puyallup, Washington area, um, from we are going to be there from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. or anytime, st on anytime the spring fair is open. Yep. The whole time, all the time on. You know spring fair spring fair week we are going to be there having fun selling yarn if you have wanted to learn how to drop spindle come by the booth if you want to test out wheels come by the booth if you want to learn how to weave come, come by, by the, the booth if you want to tell us a bad pirate joke come by the booth definitely come tell us bad pirate jokes we'll need them we will gonna... good place are you yeah so we're gonna do all that stuff and we're gonna be there and it's gonna be a blast and we're gonna have so much fun and we're totally, by the way, procrastinating and cleaning the yarn shop. Yarn shop because it's really stupid. Um, because it looks like a hurricane hit it after this last week. Hey, I'm totally, I'm totally goofing off here. So hey, we're teaching the. Just said they both. Like, like, can you take a picture of both of them? I can, but I want to show them. Okay, we're teaching the puppies to to place, so they have to sit in their spots and not move. Move. Ruben is melting uh -huh. off the chair. It's awful. He's there. He's sleeping. No, he's not. He's melting. 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 Ruben. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. Good place. Good place. It's like, it's like I hate all of you. Not really. It doesn't hate all of us. Okay. Got them. Places. There is a very good, good place. thing for them to learn. That's what we're telling ourselves. Telling them. Uh-huh. And then, yeah, so we're teaching them that because Saturday market's coming. 
Yes. The start of Saturday market. And the yarn shop, by the way, will be open while we're in, we are in Puyallup. It yeah, will be, be run because by we never... Bev and all those people, and it'll be great, and Steph, and we'll have a lot of fun. Um, because we never... We not, never close. We never close. Oh, we're gosh. still here never at whatever... Never touch your face when you have Angora. Always okay. take your Claritin. You know, if it doesn't have wool mites, it's not bad. This and been it's really been blown. Clean. If you blow your fleeces, your rabbits, before you shear, you know, there's tremendously less dander in the wool, and we appreciate that. It also goes for, you know, I don't know, alpaca. Yeah. Fuzzy. Did you know you can blow alpaca? It's amazing. You Same blower that you can do on everything else. Heather's plying, Shelly. Yes, I am plying from the center pole ball. If you She's had, almost if done. I'm almost done. I'm like, I'm almost done. She's plying um, vice. I think this is vice. I don't know, though. This might be another coat that was given to me. It's black. It's black and it's from a rabbit. I didn't mark bags. So it's French type black. It's definitely French. I think it's vice, but I'm not sure. Because I'm surprised that I sheared this because there were a lot of second cuts in it. And I'm not saying that in a negative way to whoever gave it to me. I'm just like commenting. It's kind of... Sometimes we get in a hurry. Sometimes. Shelly never does that. Mm -mm. Her fleece is always perfect. Her fleece is pretty. Then I have like two more bags of Angora. I'm waiting for her to like tell and me something. Four ornery four bags of you know mohair but we'll be spinning at the fair the whole time too i spent a lot of yarn last time i did this so we'll see what happens this time we'll be busy our... no we'll be busy we won't <laughs> <spin any yarn. laughs> we're like hey let's pass, let's pack a box so we can get right, some spinning yeah, I was done like, we'll pack a box of like all the fun rovings so we can get some spinning done so we have some miles of and in reality, we'll be busy and we'll be hoarse after the second day and not able to talk. That's because, what happens. Because we'll be like talking in whispers the whole time. We, yeah. You guys totally have to come by. Yeah, it's fun. Oh, oh, she says she does chop up her fiber sometimes. She just doesn't send it to us oh, when she does bad stuff to her fiber. There you go. That works too. My phone's like oh. yelling at me. I'm almost done, man. Okay, I've, I'm down to the, like the last. Okay, so when you get to the center of the center pole ball, see how I've got this in between my fingers like this? So it won't tangle. Right. And then I pull it out. I can't do that when I ply with thread. It's not quite the same. <sighs> well, it's not implying anything about your center pole ball issue earlier. She kind of had a problem. Aria poked it with her nose. She always blames my puppy. And my puppy is totally innocent. <laughs> My puppy is asleep mm -hmm. uh -huh. and knows place really, really well now. If she bounces into it. Because <laughs> she can't do anything without bouncing. Ruben is having an angry day regarding it. <laughs> He's in denial. He's kind of melting off the chair again. Right. He's like, no, I'm fine. Okay, see, there's, whoops, where's the yarn? Somewhere there's yarn. There's the yarn. Okay. See? See how this is nice, balanced, tight ply. Mm-hmm. Balanced ply all the way through and consistent throughout the whole bobbin. If you enter wolf skin garment contest, that's another thing that they should be looking for. I assume that they're looking for that when yes, we when do. we do our it's on judges. The, it's on the It's consistent marks. ply. See, I'll show you guys. Hang on, let me turn. See, there's the puppies. They've been placed this whole time. Sitting over there. Like being the good. Being good in their chairs. All right. You guys have fun. We're going to go wind this off. And we've got to clean the floor. Yep. <sighs> okay. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.